Welcome back. I'm David the Good. I have to get some nitrogen fixers for an agroforestry project. So it's time to go hunting in the woods, in the jungle of death. So the first set of seeds we gathered were from a Erythrina poepigiana which is, I, I believe it, I know it's an erythrina, looks like it, seeds look the same. So I'm just gonna go with that. And that is a really big tree, but you can see bean and pea family. See how they look like beans? That's your, your giveaway on a lot of these nitrogen fixing species is they look like beans or peas. There's kind of a, a look to the family. And once you spot it, you can find them everywhere. These are some of the erythrina that I got seeds for. You see how they just look like a gigantic bean from your garden? Look at that. It looks familiar, doesn't it? I mean, that could be from a lima bean, right? But it's a tree, very spiny tree. There's the bottom of the leaves. Makes a lot of nitrogen-rich biomass. And apparently, you can take the posts from it and stick them right into the ground. Look at those. Those are cool, huh? You can stick them right into the ground and they're supposed to root like Glaricidia. So as we are always experimenting, that's what we're gonna do. I got two of them. I'm gonna go stick them in my gardens. And here we have two nitrogen fixers mixed in with each other. This is a scrambling pain in the neck vine that climbs all over trees here. I have not been able to identify the species, but it makes uh, pods that my kids call Band-Aid pods because they look like Band-Aids and it is crawling over this Lucana leucocephala, which has a lot of seeds in it. And I am going to take this whole section because we need them. The alfalfa of the tropics. This is a very good nitrogen fixer. We want these in the system. They can be chopped and dropped again and again. They're good animal fodder. Very good nitrogen fixer. Small, fast growing pioneer tree, fixes a lot of nitrogen. Nice and weedy, really good for chop and drop, and it doesn't mind disturbed, bad soil, drought, and all kinds of other stuff. This is a relative of the ice cream bean. The great thing is, is we can eat some of these as we go. This is a good example of the growth, this feathery growth. You'll see this with Lucanas, you'll see this with Poinzianas, you see this with Pride of Barbados. This is an Albizia species. Um, I think this is Albizia caribbea. I'm not sure though. It's definitely an Albizia, but uh, this is a young specimen. But if you see this kind of growth, you're probably dealing with a nitrogen fixer. Not always, because the jacaranda is not a nitrogen fixer and it looks just like it, but other than that, you're generally pretty safe in assuming it's a nitrogen fixing tree. Alongside the road here is a Glaricidia sepium. This is one of the most useful nitrogen fixing trees of the tropics, because you can actually cut the posts. You can see here, this has been cut back again and again and again. You could cut these chunks and stick them in the ground. This is what I made my hedgerow out of at the edge of my garden. It's a very good nitrogen fixer. It's good animal forage. Super, super handy tree and a decent fuel wood as well. This is an old Glaricidia tree. Sometimes it's called Madre de Cacao. And you can see it's just barely hanging on. This wood here, as it gets older, it gets super, super, super hard. It makes really good coals and good firewood. Uh, you can make small things out of it, but generally the wood is not that great for making big furniture or anything out of. I'm at the edge of a farmyard right here, and these are Glaricidia. Like I was saying, they could be used for poles and cut again and again. They're very often used for fence poles. And this fence has fallen apart, but you can hammer pieces of bamboo or wood or whatever you got across hammer them into them and they just heal around it and they just grow and grow and grow and grow for years. And where rot is really a big problem here in the tropics, having a living post means you don't have a fence that rots away. 
At least the posts won't. Here is another nitrogen fixer. Note again, the bean pod. But this one comes from a really big vine. Let me see if I can tear it apart with one hand. Maybe not. No. 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 Oh, that, there we go. Look at that. Oh. Unboxing. All right. Check these out. These have all kinds of names. This is a Makuna variety. So there's our, our bean pod. There are little seeds inside. Aren't those cool? Now this is not what I want to add to the system that I'm creating right now because these guys are an aggressive, very high climbing vine and we are not at the vine layer stage of it. But they are very beautiful. These are used for jewelry, for carvings. They're super, super hard. And a trick that my kids learn from local kids, you can rub these things onto a surface really, really hard and they get super, super hot and then you can actually put burns on somebody with them. Yeah, it's neat, huh? This is a wild ginger. This is a very pretty nitrogen fixer. It makes uh, big yellow blooms and they're followed by long pods. I'm gonna pick some of these pods up later when I find a more mature one. This one's been uh, coppiced back to the ground, it looks like, for this ban banana plantation right here. Get it out of the way. It's a pretty common shade tree, very brittle. You can chop it up into bits and feed it to other stuff. Here's another pretty obvious one. You see these little more simple leaves. It's like a cassia variety here. So if I saw pods on this thing, I would say, hey, I could harvest some of those and stick them in my food forest as a nitrogen fixer. Obviously, that is some member of the bean and pea family. And judging by the fact that it is nice and rich and green, it's probably making its own nitrogen quite well. These are a few wild stands of Bambooza vulgaris giant bamboo. Not a nitrogen fixer. Here's another bean and pea family. This, this one will trick you. This is the uh, baby uh, West Indian locust, uh, Hymenaea corboril, which is a, it's also called stinking toe. This tree, the nitrogen fixation is disputed, but it is bean and pea family, and if you ever see the pods, you know it. It's obvious, they're like a big old fat bean pod. Taking a long, leisurely way back home over the remnants of this old broken dam. Oh yeah, this is totally safe. It's very scenic, it's beautiful down here. found this washed down a gully. The roots are just starting to come out of the bottom there. You see that? And it looks like it needs a home. It was down in the, the rocks of a gully, just laying on its side like, David the Good, won't you plant me? Cocos nucifera, not a nitrogen fixer. I'd say that's a pretty good haul right there. A lot of tree potential. So now I am back at home and I want you guys to see what's going on here. You see, these are Gluricidia stakes. I've been sticking them here and there. So they're gonna be permanent living trellis poles. That way, I've got the extra mulch that they create, the nitrogen fixation, Plus, they are poles that don't rot out. So these are all Gluricidia. Now these are actually probably not planted as deeply as they should be. That one in the middle is not a Gluricidia. That one that's falling over is not me being dumb. That one was already there. But these guys here, these are really tall. So I'm trying to see if they're still gonna root out. I watered them in, but we shall see. But these, these posts over time will grow and then the tops of them get chopped again and again and again. And they can support other things. So I'm sticking them here and there through the system. And like, for example, this one right here, this is a Gluricidia post. 
And then down at the bottom, I just planted this black pepper, which needs to be tied up to it. So it's gonna be supporting a black pepper and it'll give it a little bit of shade in the hot and dry season. And then it'll give it mulch, but it's also a living post. There's a lot of uses for nitrogen fixers. I've also got these Inga edulis, the ice cream bean, growing right in the middle of some of my garden beds. If it looks like it's in the bean and pea family, if it looks like it's related to something you know is a nitrogen fixer, if it's got pods and seeds in it, they look like beans, they look like a royal poinciana, you know, once you see a few of these things, you start to see the patterns, you start to see the way the leaves look and the pods look, and you start to say, I'm reasonably certain that's a nitrogen fixing tree. And there's probably a ton of them in your area that can be used to restore degraded land, to build the soil, to be used for chop and drop, to be used for living fences and support poles and goat fodder or whatever else. So tons of uses. You can propagate your own, save lots of money on buying them and you know, just go out hunt, see what works, see what's doing really well. Look for those pioneer species that you can chop and drop and use for your food forest systems. Hope this was helpful and uh, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Be sure to check out Free Plants for Everyone, the good guide to plant propagation if you're interested in actually growing a lot of these species yourself from seed. And until next time, may your thumbs always be great.